Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I really just can't get into Australian pig movies. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss... Boar! Released in 2017. Written and directed by Chris Sun. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Boar? Well, the story follows a group of people in the Australian outback that are each targeted by a gigantic mutant boar. The boar races around and manages to sneak up and kill a few people, and then the movie ends. I'm gonna turn the light out. What? Oh, that was, a, that was a pretty brief synopsis here. Oh, man, I, I struggled with this movie, well, you know. Well, Chris Sun uh, has become a bit of a of a known name, in Australia especially. Oh, okay. For his Ozploitation Ozpo- movies. Right, okay. Now, he got his start a few years ago with Come and Get Me from 2011. He followed that one up with Daddy's Little Girl in 2014. Okay. And then also Charlie's Farm in 2014. Then this film had about three years of development hell and production woes. Wow. Before just last year, uh, he released The Possessed. Uh, All of these films under his production company, Slaughter FX. Right, okay. But while making Boar, from some of the stories that I've heard, they had uh, some of their... uh, An actor passed away. uh, The bar set burnt down. Oh, wow. uh, Lots lots of issues of building this mechanical boar. Right, yeah. I mean, right off the bat, if if you know this is a horror movie and it's called Boar, this is about a killer pig. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and the, and the first major thing to know is that at least this is not a CGI boar. For the most part, <laughs> yeah. they actually built this gigantic animatronic boar that I think so- took six people to operate, either inside or remote control. Okay. And uh, and so, yeah, you know what? That That's like, you've you got to praise it when it gets made, when they actually get it out there. Yeah. But, but that's probably all of the good stuff out of the way that's that's it that's it because like i saw this on the list realized it was an australian horror movie about a killer pig and i started to have flashbacks to razorback from i think 1984 great movie great uh, movie. is it really gary is it because i've seen it once and i could i think it bored me so much ha huh, bore um that i never wanted to go back to it like it was filmed mainly at night you didn't see a lot of the monster killing any of the people like my memories of razorback well in comparison to this razorback oozes tension suspense okay and it has beautiful cinematography i'll give you that this movie oozes none of that it has no tension it has no suspense but it also, like you said, has this huge mechanical monstrosity running around, which they couldn't frame right, they couldn't silhouette right, and the most you get are some really cool squealing shots, and the rest is the rest is just killing off characters for the sake of trying to get gore into the movie and not doing it very well. Like, we have Bill Mosley playing Bruce, like... Bill Mosley is like a name in the horror genre. And I'm sure in his time he has done some really, really, really great movies. And then he's done things like this, which are just a waste of his character. Oh, absolutely. The moment, like, when I see his name pop up, I'm like, yes, we've got Otis from Devil's Reject. Where is he? And he's playing nice, friendly stepdad. Nice, yeah. I'm like... why did they cast him in this role? This is this is not because the main is lead, it against type. Is the, it <laughs> the main lead is going to Nathan Jones? Yes, that Nathan Jones, the ex wrestler, the ex wrestler, the guy Nathan who was with Jones. Undertaker for a little bit. Yeah, and the guy who did I think like eight years in jail and Hero with Jet Li, and he also did a World Heavyweight Australian Power Weightlifter, dude. Mad Max, and he's in it. And where the fuck is he? Both these two main character names that you see appear at the beginning of the fucking movie don't actually appear in the movie for another 20, 30 minutes. Well, no, they they, they have small scenes, but then those scenes are, but are pushed aside. Nothing to establish them. Nothing. Well, we, you know, big, strong muscle dude, family dude. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> now I tell you, this film lost me right up, right up until it's op- when its opening credits hit the screen. That was the minute the film lost well, me. Well, after the two and people I knew, died, and I knew that we were yeah. going to be in for a bit of a shit show. It was, yeah. And uh, yeah. and, and it's the scene where we yeah we got two randoms in the car, middle of the night, driving randoms. through Australia. Yeah, and uh, lots of boars go running past them. They're like, what could be causing these boars to but, go running? Oh, they- and you know they're, they're playing. You know, they're playing with the radio or the music or... But I don't know. The camera just rushes at the car and we hear a scream. There's a quick flash, I think, of the radio player or something. And then the title hits the screen. And I was just like, that... Like, I mean, so I know that's a stinger bullshit. that's been at the beginning of, like, so many episodes of maybe, like, Supernatural. Yeah. You know, or any horror show. Yeah, But, yeah. but it's it's straight to DVD schlock having that kind of intro. Yeah, because I'm watching these two people driving along and I'm thinking, okay, scary outback, it's nighttime, how is this gonna build up? I'm not looking for too much at the beginning of this movie. Like, you know I wiki my movies. Right. About five sentences this movie had for its plot. Five sentences. Well, it's because and it I has was, no plot. And I was immediately worried. And so as soon as I see these two people driving at the start, the guy's driving along, you know, lights are on, 50 miles per hour, and he gets scared by a bunny rabbit and almost pulls the fucking car off the road. And she's like, oh, you scared me. Oh, yeah, sorry. It was a bunny. I'm like, you're driving at night in the dark. What? You're not prepared? The boar hits, the title comes up, and we cut something else. Yeah. Now, this is the thing. It's like, I looked at what the director was well, drew his inspiration from, and he was like, well, actually, I didn't really draw my inspiration too much he stole it from, from Razorback. From Razorback. <laughs> no, he said he didn't. Uh, although he respects it and understands it. He said yeah. his biggest inspiration for this was Jaws. And I was like, well, the opening of Jaws has one of the most horrific kills in all of cinematic history. Yeah. Like, And that kill at the beginning stays with you the entire time. Like, How did you... Did you did you even... Did because, you... <laughs> because they couldn't get the giant mechanical boar to work in a way just like they can get the well, shark they could, to work. Well, exactly. It just wasn't going to work. <laughs> so we then, we then, like we said, we cut to Bill Mosley and his family driving through the outback. They're trying to head to Kudanga Hotel because you have Sasha, the barmaid, um, and her dad, Ken. Uh, played by John Jarrett, um, I think, who was in Wolf Creek 1 and 2, the main guy in that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so this he's is, brilliant. He, he, he's great in that. but He's also really good at this, despite not having very much to do. Now, I will say, this film absolutely oozes that Australian charm. The way they interact with each other, the way they talk to each other. Yeah, it was and like it's howling great. three all over again. And it's great for just a couple of minutes. But when we realise that we're getting introduced to characters that won't serve the plot, when nope. we're getting scenes that mm-hmm. are just there as filler, you, you start you when you see it more and more as the film goes on, you're just like, what is actually the point? I th- I think a lot of these things were supposed to lead somewhere, but they never did it in post production. So like, was it Ernie, the Aborigine man, who gets some money off of Robbie, the 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 older boyfriend to the daughter of the family? Like, you gotta remember these key points of these people, or you're just gonna be like, who the fuck's that dying? Um, he, the Aboriginal man, he takes some money from the from the kid, and it turns out that he owns like the biggest oil reserve around here. And I thought, oh, maybe that's why they've got a giant fucking boar running around, because the movie doesn't actually explain that at all. What the, nobody knows about it. Ken, who seems to have lived here for most of his fucking life, is playing like, oh, who's been breaking the fences? We don't know. Who's eating the livestock? We, we don't, don't know. know. <laughs> and there's really no interaction with Nathan Jones until, like, the next day. We have to go for a whole night set piece first until we get to the next day when Bill Mosley and his family turn up. And it turns out that That's he's Uncle Bernie. 50 minutes into the 50 film. 50 minutes. It was like he's a completely separate plot yeah. line that... We get introduced to the family, and that is it until the 50-minute mark. Fuck me! There's, a, there's also me. one other completely random scene where they're still driving there, and we see this other person on a motorcycle doing a wheelie, and oh. s- sails right past them, and they yeah. almost crash. And I was like, I wonder who that character was. Nope, they've just driven right out of the movie. Bye! Yeah, that, and so, yeah, yeah we literally yeah. follow Ken and his friend Blue, who are... Uh, they go to the bar. He sees his daughter. He fills his he fills his van up with beer and and sandwiches. Going to go out to the outback and just drink. just get drunk. Just get yeah, drunk. That's just what get they drunk. Do. 
and uh, and and literally we like it's just their back and forth conversations between him and his friend Blue. Yeah, you know, I, I was like, you know what? I, I guess these are the main characters of the film now because the I film, hope they were. The film has spent were. the most time with these two characters, so I was like, okay, I'm following this this weird, drunk, silly, almost stupid behavior. Uh, you know, I, I recognize him, of course, as John Jarrett. So I'm like, I, you know, I'm going to get behind this character. He seems to be the one yeah, who's going to probably lose also, his friend out here and then end up having to save the family later. But it also felt exactly the same with Bill Mosley that they were wasting John Jarrett as well. Yeah, like he yeah, didn't have, like he they didn't were. have anything to work with, and so well, most of his conversational pieces lead nowhere. Because when it cuts to night time, we get not only the random guy working on his tractor whose dog. Seems to have died or got caught up in the fence. I'm not entirely sure. He gets killed off screen. Well, I mean, he, he does die off screen, but we get plenty of him on screen trying to peel the barbed wire away from his legs. And I have to yeah. say, it's the most yeah, that awful, was... awful pain, in pain screaming in the entire film where he looks like he's literally just stubbed his toe. <laughs> He drags know? himself away. Like, he doesn't yeah. unwrap his legs. He drags himself <laughs> no. away. Which I'm like, that would make the wound worse. Yes. That's... And then you get the two random people that are in the, in the forest. Like, the, the, the guy and the girl. And the guy's really annoyed. Like, he's, he's really annoyed. And he starts to get really annoyed at his girlfriend. And so she starts to make fun of him. And then they hear, start hearing noises. So he turns the light off at one point on his torch. Turns it back on again, and her head is skewered through the boar's. Well, pus. this is this is way after we met the other two at the at the camp in the first place. We've yeah, oh, got yeah. a couple making out in the tent, uh, and sh and he he wants to get it on, and she's like, "Well, go and check, make sure the other two aren't just waiting outside for us." I and go thought get that me a these drink. two were connected, but these two turned up so later on, and nobody talked about the two people at the tent. I was like, who are these random people? Well, yeah, there was but, four of them out there camping, and that's who uh, that's who John Jarrett spots because he sees the fire in the distance with his friend, and so they're like, we best go out there and tell them that they I, don't have but, a permit for being out here. And I was like, oh, here we go, Wolf Creek again. But it was so edited so badly; they were so all over the place because the boyfriend and the girlfriend in the t in the tent, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go get a drink for you, and she's like, okay, I'll wait here, and she, he goes outside, and then Stealth Pig turns up. Oh uh, yeah. Ryan, is that you? Well, it takes him out. You're like, we hear a muffled yelp. A muffled yelp? This thing's like fucking... This thing's massive. How it snuck up and got him with like a muffled yelp, I, I won't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because the next minute, it's ripping through the tent trying to eat the girl. Yeah, and well, she just feeds herself to it. She does. She's like, oh my God, there's giant mouths in front of me. I'm going to put my arms in its mouth. Because it... Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I felt that because I'm watching this movie and I'm just like, the, 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 the boar is such a great effect, but you are not getting anything, any extra movement from it, that it's just, you're just going to have your actors just throw themselves at it. But then fucking Ken and Blue turn up and they come across the two dead bodies and they're like, oh, well, you know, you, Blue, you've got to go back to the van, you know, maybe go get some help. This was a, this... This was like a five minute conversation as well. Yeah. Like, this conversation does not need to be this no. long. And, he, and he's just like, you go back. No, you go, No, you stay. No, you take the gun. No, you take the gun. No, you get the bullets. No, you keep the light. No, you go back. And then what do I do? Then you go get help. No, then you come here with the bullets. And that's why it didn't seem funny to me anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it seemed it seemed okay at the start. But if these two are our main, these are <laughs> the worst bumbling heroes ever. But luckily that's not the case. Because Blue gets killed. And I wasn't even impressed by that. Well, no, yeah. again, it was just like they, they, they're shining the light around or they're just looking around. I mean, a lot of the Australian sets in this, the Outback, is big open areas. Yeah. And they never see this giant boar, boar. until it's right in front of them. Yeah. So I'm like, this, this is this thing teleporting? Is it a phantom? Is it a spirit? Is it... That's what, it. What, That's what? it. You're like, you're making up your own back history for this magical boar that seems to be sneaking up on people because the movie's just not doing it very well. Like when, like Ken comes across, after Blue's being killed, which was just a waste, 
Ken comes across the girlfriend and the boyfriend in the woods. Now, this girl had got a fucking tusk thrust through her fucking chin and had got chewed up by the boar before it dropped on the floor and killed her boyfriend. So, so I was like, I had no doubt that she was fucking dead until Ken turned up and went, are you okay? And she's like, oh, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> I was like, how the f- are you still alive? How? I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, I went back, I watched the film a second time. <laughs> okay. right? And I was like, I want to check where that boar, you know, b- bored her. Right and, through and, the fucking mouth. But no, but yeah, no, I mean, we see it out of her mouth. But I was like, but it, it, there's nothing underneath her chin. It looks like it's come through the back of her head. Right, I was right. like, that's even more unlikely that she would still be alive to even speak at this point and tell him the, her name. And it even chewed her up a couple yeah, of times. Spat her out like her. a rag doll. So she should have been fucking dead. And instead Ken comes up and he's like, look, I'm going to lay this jacket on you to keep you warm so I can take you to the hospital because I think you're going into shock. I'm like, shock? Shock? Okay, and then... The boar turns up and scares Ken, so Ken kind of lures it off and hides from it, and then comes back for her. And now she's dead. And now she's dead. And then it turns up and it kills Ken as well. Yeah, and he has his final moment where he pulls his blade, and he's kind of like, I'm going to be with my dead wife now, who passed away 15 years ago. I'm coming, Mary Ann. Come on, you piece of shit! Yeah, that, I just <laughs> remember that conversation bit. It's been like, oh man, are you still missing your wife? Yeah, how long has it been? 15 years. I was like, what? 15 years <laughs> since I buried my heart. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, <laughs> did you only ask him now? Well, no, we've got to bring it up now because that's the most character we have that's it. in the film. Now, that is the 50 minute mark when Ken has died. And, yeah. you know, there's only like 35 minutes left of the film, including credits. Yeah. Where we now spend the rest of the time with this family because everybody oh, God, else is now was, dead. This was so fucking bad because the family turns up at Bernie's farm and you've got Nathan Jones playing with goats. And it, the whole movie plays on the motif that he's a giant, huge, muscle bound meathead, but he's really a fucking cuddly toy, you know. And he's friends with Bruce because they've met before. And now he's going to get on with Robbie because Robbie's kind of wanting to shag his niece or whatever. And his, his niece is. Well, the actress playing the niece is just the atypical. She wants to have sex with Robbie, but she's saving herself kind of thing. And he fucking... Nathan Jones comes up with this great idea about taking this family out to a pond out, out in the outback. On the way, they stop off at Sasha's bar while she's getting her ass slapped by a patron who... I don't know why this whole scene was in the fucking film because Nathan Jones just comes in and bashes the guy's head off a table and then he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Sasha, I really love you. Oh, what's that? Your dad's not come home after a night of drinking with his buddy? Oh, well, I hope nothing bad's happened to him. I'll have a look. And so they head out to the fucking pond and they go for a little bit of a swim and everybody's having a nice little chat, trying to build character for fucking Nathan Jones's character and Bruce's character and Robbie and all that and it's so wasted because you're just watching the time you're like okay can we have some killing you know we'd we'd seen the boar it's special effect and I gotta admit it looked okay but then when it was put in the context of the movie it was just a, a fucking model boar we then had the CGI version of the boar running around and that had looked even worse. So I had not been impressed by any of the boar stuff other than the killings. And even then that had been a, a bit of a joke, especially with the girl with the tusk for her mouth. I thought the killings were pretty impressive. I mean, it was it was it was the shock, the horror. It was something happening. It was Howling you know? Five all over again. <laughs> no, it was better than Howling Five. I don't know. Because we at least had monster and victim in its mouth Man. being chewed up. I mean, Howling Five has got Da Douche. Fucking The Boar has got Nathan Jones singing Vanilla Ice. For at least three fucking minutes. <laughs> We're quick and nimble. I go crazy when I hear that simple hi hat with a souped up tempo. I want to roll. Time to go. <laughs> and then bore out of nowhere. Bore out of nowhere. It rams him. <laughs> and he arms himself up. And you're like, okay, now Nathan Jones is the fucking. Bernie's the fucking hero because everybody else is dead. I guess so. And Robbie and Bruce. 
hear the car crash and they're like hey we're gonna go and see what that noise is because you know we're we're inquisitive and we've only got 20 minutes of this movie left so we've got to make some scenes and so they start walking off and robbie starts talking to bruce about hey maybe i'm gonna marry your stepdaughter <laughs> yeah it's like right stop the film we need to take a five minute out here to talk about marriage yeah I was like, this is not much left of the film, guys. Do we really need to have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation between these two characters? Which, yes. Let me just check. Oh, wait. <laughs> these guys aren't going to be around for much longer anyway. Because it's got to set up the next bit because fucking they come across the boar. They sneak up on the boar instead of the boar sneaking up <laughs> on them. And they see this CGI thing. And Bill Mosley does his best to go, hey, look, it's a horrible boar thing. Oh, but that was the actual model. That was the real boar there. Oh, right. Oh, uh, it's... You said it was a gigantic, uh, you know, prop puppet. It's really impressive, but it can't move. No. It can only move its head and its tail and its ears and its eyes, yeah. but it can't actually walk anywhere. No. The Unless moment you see CGI. it walking, it's the CGI, CGI one. It scares Bruce and Robbie, and so Robbie goes to run off and leave Bruce there, and he pushes him over. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's just like screw you, he runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Dad just turns around, like, eh? what? And then he's getting decapitated by the boar. Yeah, Bill Mosley <laughs> gets his head ripped off, which I'd never thought I'd ever see Bill Mosley get killed by a monster. Right, he is the monster. monster. You know, <laughs> I was like, man, I really thought he was gonna have like a confrontation with this uh, boar to defend his family. Be... Oh, it it gets worse. It gets worse. Oh, it does. It gets worse because Robbie is running to everybody, screaming, "Yeah, the boar's going! It's going to kill us!" And they're like, "What? What are you talking about?" And then all of a sudden, the boar somehow drive bys out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a big <laughs> oh, open no. field. Like they're looking at Robbie, running at them, and you can't see this huge fucking boar to your left running full pelt at him. That's the thing. I'm like, but just... the direction, it doesn't make sense. Is Why is it coming from that direction it... when it should be coming from where Robbie was running from? It pounds him. All the way back earlier when, uh, yeah, when, when Ken finds the other girl... Mm. And, you know, the boar had obviously attacked the ones at the tent, then attacked her and her boyfriend in the woods, then yeah. went over and attacked Blue wherever he was, then came back here yeah. for Ken. I was just like, this boar is certainly so, getting around. Yeah, he does. He and, does. and so when I see it running out of nowhere, out of frame, just in here from a different direction again, I was like, I just, I hey, just, no, movie. No, movie. You've lost no, me. You've lost me. Because the boar kills this guy, um, and so you've got uh, Bruce's wife, left uh, the uh, the door ella sorry her little brother and you've got bart. Uh, and your bart and you've got big bernie left as well who does come stumbling out yeah just and, like oh it's a wild boar we gotta run we gotta run we gotta run and and do they get to the barn first or is no, no they they're, get they're, the barn they're running after? and that's when bart falls over oh, and then just lays there until the boar gets him and mum tries to save him it, it was the it was the constant use of awful slow motion yeah like i know the film doesn't have yeah, it has so much filler so much pointless dialogue and now to top it all off we get pointless slow motion Mom, Bart! and fucking bernie's not doing anything it gets even it gets even worse it gets even worse because bart gets dragged away and you're like holy shit bart's been killed everyone's gonna die in this fucking movie and they get into the barn and the mum starts beating on bernie because you didn't save my son he was my baby you didn't save it i'm like no he didn't. He kind of just stood there. That's what made that whole sequence even worse. It's when the door is just like, oh, mum, you got to be optimistic. Maybe Bart's all right. <laughs> yes, like, she did. What? She did. <laughs> what did you oh, just God. Say? Why did you fucking cry? Why? Why? Why, Bernie? We have to stay positive. No. God. And then, then the boar just fucking attacks the shed. Well, he opens the door and he's like, right, I've got to go and check outside. Oh, there's the bear. <laughs> yeah. the, the boar. The boar. <laughs> and, and, and so now Bernie is going to take it upon himself to protect his sister and his niece, you know, with the knife and kill this boar, even though it's, um, you know, he didn't save his nephew. And as they run off, he, he and the boar have kind of a better fight than Ken does. But it's so bad. He gets it's horrifically so gored, doesn't he? And he's like, his intestines and guts are hanging out. Horrifically. Yeah. Like. Yeah, he should have been dead. <laughs> no, because it's fake, yeah? It's so blatantly fake. <laughs> the special oh, no, the gore so effects fake. are pretty damn good. Uh, I, maybe it was me. Maybe I'd lost it. From, this from the corpses we saw at the tent, I, like the way they were torn to pieces. I was like, yeah, it's pretty impressive. I was like, yeah, that's it. Maybe the movie had lost me by... S s 
by at this point that I just I generally didn't care who lived or who died. Uh, I care I... <laughs> because this film does something at the, at, in its ending, which really pissed me off. <laughs> oh, massively. The ending is evil because it gets worse after Bernie is taken out. Mum and daughter get together and they start to make some torches. That's right. Because the, the daughter had seen some survival program and I can't believe her, her father's dead or her stepdad and her boyfriend's dead. So they, she's managed to get this memory and she sets fire to this torch and the pig sneaks up on them. As it does. As it does. <laughs> and and they're, they're fighting it. And Sasha comes out of fucking nowhere with her car. Yeah. And, and plows right into the board. Like, taking it right out. No setup. No, no build up. But the thing is. All of a sudden just. Like there the she first is. time watching this film. I called it. Like halfway through the film. I was like that boar's getting taken out by the bar, by the, by the barmaid with her car. I was like I just. I just and the moment it happened I was like this. This is awful. Like so how bad. she didn't even know if the boar was real. She there was no way from where she was driving that she would have even seen the boar. So she just just went. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn off the road right now over this hill and plow. plow. Lucky me. Right into the... oh, because that's what God. I mean. I swear there were plot points that they've cut out and it's not explained <laughs> it because like there must have been a backstory for this giant boar people well, we, must we, have we known had, about we had it the five town. minute scene in the bar where we had the crazy old man just yeah, going yeah I saw f- it when I was drunk and I'm telling you it was real that's it, that's it. it just it, it, there was no build up no payoff, nothing because the boar gets fucking taken out Sasha shoots it in the fucking face with a, a gun and it fucking goes down Bernie and Bart both turn up they're alive that's what I fucking care because they should both be very, very dead. Oh, not only that, but the mum, the daughter, Bart, Bernie and Sasha all get in the car. I think it's the same car. Yeah, yeah. And start to drive off and the boar is alive. Yeah, that's why this film, when it gets to its ending, earns the big old fuck you. Fuck you. From me. Fuck for you. wasting my goddamn time. Fuck you, movie. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, now apparently there was discussions of no, uh, of a don't sequel. Say it. Oh, no. Um and there was also discussions of a sequel to uh, to Charlie's Farm as well because obviously same director and obviously both films starring Nathan Jones. Right, and apparently okay. Nathan Jones and the and the director had a huge falling out after this film. <laughs> so all ideas of sequels with with the two of them have been completely dropped now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I I don't think I'd be returning for a bore too. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> boring. Well, we've already made the boring joke. It's... Oh, bore. I know. Yeah. Favorite scenes, Ian? Um, it's quite sad. I had two, really. Um, the first one was the girl getting skewered up through the chin. I just thought it was so unbelievable. The build up to it with him turning the light off or it going dark and then it's just coming back on and her being there somehow the boar. Managed to sneak up, jump its tusk up through her mouth or through the back of her head. Do everything that it needs to do to her. And for her to still be alive later on when Ken finds her. It's fucking amazing. Um, And Bill Moseley's death. Um, There's not many times that you see an iconic horror character like Bill Moseley die. So I was kind of glad that the boar gave him such a cool decapitation. But even then it was such a waste of him... His time, my time, the money, the budget, the actors, just oxygen. Like, even just film print. Like, turning the electricity on to film it just was such a fucking waste of time. <laughs> I uh, I don't really have any favourite scenes in the film. I really enjoyed John Jarrett uh, playing Ken. Right. Uh, I loved, uh, you know, he was a good, fun, goofy character. He was dopey, stupid and drunk. And for me, the film really ended when, when he died. So five out of the seven dwarfs he was. He was, yeah, exactly. That's why he was so entertaining to watch. Uh, but let me give you a small list of things that really annoyed me in this film. Please do. The opening kill or cut to the title was awful. Yep. The man trapped in the barbed wire fence was awful. Yep. The motorbike wheelie scene. What the fuck was the point in that? Yep. Um, I don't like Robert. I prefer Robbie. Yeah. Awful, awful filler dialogue yeah. here awful yeah awful family dialogue the, the the joking of the sex talk in the back of the car like are you a virgin oh we're gonna go have a blowjob oh, blah, 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 blah. and then the parents just like oh we're gonna pull over and we're gonna oh. yeah that was yeah it was just mind numbing it didn't develop these characters it was just an awful way to introduce them and make me dislike them all immediately mm-hmm 
It was just all utter nonsense. No character development. Uh, the discussion of the wedding right before they both get killed off. I was like, oh, that was totally pointless. <laughs> yeah. Awful. Yeah. The bar scene with the old drunk dude explaining how we saw the boars 12 months ago and nobody believes him. Yeah. The car, Debbie, knowing it was the boar and just driving it right out of freaking nowhere. <laughs> Awful. But Barney, uh, Bernie and Bart both surviving. And and then and then the boar also surviving after being obliterated by the car and by the the rifle shots of its skull. Yeah. Awful. Awful. <laughs> well, Ian. Well, actually, no, before before we go to 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 our recommendations, because I think you know what we might have to say. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say that I did enjoy the the practical effects in the film, the creation of the boar itself, the animatronic work that went into it, from the fur uh, to its eyes to its look. I thought that they captured that really really well. So any of the boar shots that weren't CGI gets get got two thumbs up from me as well, and also the sound design, you know, because when when you see the boar just chomping away it, it's really the sound effects that really add to this thing being alive because we know it's a puppet but the sound effects really delivered on that front as well no this movie it gets a big fat fucking no from me it was a waste of an hour and 35 minutes and it's an hour and 35 minutes i'm never going to get back but i've got this horrible memory of watching an australian australian boar movie um they just, they are the Z animals for me in horror movies. You get your alien, you get your thing, you get your alligators, you get your fucking giant bats. You can have werewolves, you can have vampires, you can have fucking anything. But you cannot make a horror movie out of a boar or a wild pig. It just doesn't work. I know Gary has got this whole thing about practical effects as well. And I so do I, but they've got to work in the context of stuff. And... Unlike Jaws, where when the, the small moments that you see the shark, you go, oh, look, it's fake. The rest of the movie is two hours of fucking build up for you to go, oh, look, it's a fake shark. But it's fine because it's all build up. This, this is an hour and 30 minutes of shot after shot of seeing what looks to be a boar, but isn't really a boar because it's an animatronic trying to kill people badly. Don't watch it or watch it and hate me for it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really <laughs> won't be recommending Boar, no. as this was painfully average from start to finish, and with an ending that just totally ruined the entire film. <laughs> yeah. A huge disappointment. The plot is non-existent, just a different group of people encountering the boar every 15 minutes before being killed off. Rinse and repeat. There was no story, nope. just horror vignettes with more gore in each chunk. The characters were bland, one-dimensional fodder for the boar, with only John Jarrett as the standout performer. He was funny, memorable, and sadly underused. The horror scenes or moments were ruined by poor editing and direction as the giant boar was invisible to the characters until it made its attack. It was laughable. It was silly and confusing. It lacked any atmosphere, tension or even scares. The film, I will say, looked great though. Some beautiful cinematography, well lit nighttime shots and some great camera movement. The music was it was serviceable, but the sound effects, again, were decent. The real star of the film, though, as you may know, is the boar itself. <laughs> it looked good on screen, a large animatronic puppet that was incredibly imposing, practical and real, but sadly was mostly stationary, where it was the ugly CGI boar that took its place. Gorehounds will love the chomping of limbs and splatterings of blood, but the story and characters make it make so much of it feel meaningless. It really is meh. In the outback, no one can hear you squeal. <laughs> Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews. Jesus! Yeah. That's it.